Hey guys, it's Nicolas Chitel Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about cameras and how do you set up cameras in Unity. Can you have multiple cameras? Can you have a single camera? What are some of the different settings in a camera? Can I use an orthographic view? Can I use a perspective view? How we can actually, you know, use some of those settings to make sure that we are portraying our game the best way. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you in this video how we can use cameras in Unity. I show you how to align the camera with the view. So if I have the camera selected, you have additional options. So if I go to game object, you can say, okay, align this camera with the view, align view to select it. And these are just really helpful whenever you want to make sure that what you're looking at in your scene, you can basically align the camera with. So if I select the camera, I can, and, and I say, I press the E key on my keyboard, I can rotate the camera whenever I want. So you, you're welcome to, you know, if you wanna move the camera, you're more than welcome to change that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this a tiny bit more, and I'm gonna move my project pane to the bottom, right? Because I wanna focus on the camera in this video. Okay, perfect. So if I move the camera back, you can see that, that it's changing the perspective on my left side. If I go and basically move it this way, I hold my, my E key and now I can rotate it and I can see I can see everything. So the other thing that I can do that I can like I show you in the other videos is I can say okay this is the view that I want this camera to have. So I'm gonna basically pan around and that's what I want the camera to see. Then I can go into game object and then align with view. And that's basically gonna show me everything that I'm seeing. I can also change the size. Oops, let me just undo that change the X range and I can see that how my camera position is changing and I can see that on my game view. I can also go down if I wanted to by using the transform. So the camera just like every other every other game object acts very much the same. You have a transform where you can position, rotate and scale the camera. So now what I can do is if you if you look at these points around the camera view, that's called the field of view. So if I wanted just to focus on you know, the sphere in my capsule, I can change the field of view, which is changing this slider right here. I can also go back into the slider and then say, okay, my field of view, it's gonna be very wide and very big because I wanna see everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change it to be something like that so that I can see everything. The, the other thing that I can do is you have something called clear flags assigned to a camera. So right now the, the flags are the, the sky box but what if I wanted to have a solid color? What if I wanted this to be black? Or if I wanted this to be, you know, a red color? Or I wanted this to be a green? You can change these clear flags to be able to change the color of what the background is. So if I want it to be the skybox, you can leave that, you know, a skybox. If I want it to be a solid color, which is what I'm gonna do, and then just do, you know, something like this, maybe right around, a dark gray perfect and the other thing that I that I can do is I can use what's called a cooling mask and and this is gonna help us determine what what type of objects this camera is gonna be you know rendering so right now this is set to everything so that means that it's gonna whatever it sees through is gonna is gonna be able to see on the on the game scene so if I change this to none I'm not able to see every anything because I changed the cooling mask to nothing if I change it to everything, I can see everything because every single layer, it's gonna be included as part of the camera render. Perfect, so now go into projection. So if I click on perspective, this is gonna be by default a perspective view. If I change it to autographic, which I really like to because I like to creating, you know, more of isometric style games. So that's when when you'll use that type of a view. And you can see that that kind of looks, you know, it gives, gives it a really cool look of kind of an isometric style, but if I want to change it back to perspective, I can click on perspective and then just basically reposition my camera. Perfect, so I already covered what the field of view is and you can see if I change my field of view, that's changing the field of view of the camera. I can also use what's called a physical camera and this is something new to Unity. You can change the, you know, the focal length you can change the sense the sensor type if you want it to be you know a millimeters super a millimeters so for for those of you who are more familiar with physical cameras this is you're going to basically relate to this quite a bit 
and you can change some of these other settings, sensor size, the lens shift, the gate fit, and some of these things I don't even, I have never used. So you're more than welcome to experiment with those. I'm going to disable the physical camera because I'm used to just the regular camera. And I'm gonna go back to having, you know, about 75 on my, on my field of view. The other thing that I can do is, you know, determine what the clipping panes are. And this is, you know, the distance that you want to start rendering objects. If I, if I change this to say one, you can now, if I go, I'm gonna paint around and you can see how that's changing, how far I can start rendering. So if I change it to, you know, something about, you know, like, like 5.7, you can see the object is starting to appear as I increment this. So this is really helpful when it comes to, you know, optimization. If you don't really need to render a very large area, you might want to change the clipping planes to be, you know, very, you know, a low number. But if you don't really mind and you have, you know, you know, you do have mountains and you have things very far away that you want to render through this camera, then you can adjust the, you know, the far setting. The other thing that is really important to, to use is the viewport rec. And if I want to change this, you can kind of see that I change that I can change the the viewport. If I change this to be something like this. And, and this is really helpful when it comes to, you know, you may want to have multiple cameras and, and you, you might, you know, if you play a lot of games, you can see that in some games we have, you know, may, we may want one camera to be looking at one area, especially in card games. You have, you know, one camera might be looking at a, at a different angle and then another camera might be looking at what you're seeing. So you can change the viewport rec to do that. I might have another camera that is basically rendering another angle and I'll show you that in a minute how we can change those. So I'm going to go back and undo and have one and one. The other thing that we can do whenever we have multiple cameras, we can change the depth. And as the tooltip says, this is a camera, camera with a larger depth is drawn at the top of the camera with a smaller depth. So you can play with this setting as you have, you know, multiple, multiple cameras. The other thing that you can select is the graphic settings. If you want to change the graphic settings to be forward, the fair legacy, then you can change those in here. All use graphic settings and I'll show you how these options work in another video. You can also tell this camera to render through a target texture. And if you want to do that, you can just basically select, you know, this option and assign that. We're not going to do that right now. You also have options for occlusion cooling, allow HDR, allow MSAA, and allow dynamic resolution, which we're not going to cover right now, but just know that those are available. Then if you have multiple displays and for instance, let's say that you wanted one camera to render, you know, on display one, you can assign that camera to display one. Let's say that you want to have another camera that is assigned to display two, you can do that as well. So. Let's do that right now so that you can see if I want to, I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna rename this one and it's gonna say camera, and let's say that this is camera front. And then I'm gonna duplicate it by just pressing Command and D. And this is gonna be, maybe we want to do a camera that is always looking at the side. And what I'm gonna do for that one is I'm going to basically look at the side view perspective, maybe something like that. And because I have that selected, I can go into game object and then align with view. So now if you look at it, I can look at my camera preview. Camera front is looking kind of like a, the front perspective. Camera side is looking at the side. I can also, you know, if I want to disable the camera side, I can see that the camera front is the one that is selected. If I disable that one, now I don't see anything and I can enable my camera side. Now I have multiple cameras that are looking at basically different angles. You can also say that camera two, you know, may want to render display two. So you can select camera two to render, you know, to look at what's on display two. You can say that camera one is display one. So that's how you can use some of those different settings. The, the other thing that is really, really important about cameras is you may not want all cameras to render everything. So for instance, let's say that I want camera two to only be rendering the sphere. So what I can do is I can click on the sphere and go into layers and I'm going to add a new layer. And for now, let's say that this is going to be, you know, let's call this one the blue layer and I'm just going to call it blue layer. And if I go back into my camera side, I can change the cooling mask and then basically click on nothing, the option nothing. And now go into the blue layer 
And that's going to allow me to select, you know, only to render things that are part of that blue layer. So let's go back into our sphere and make sure that we assign the blue layer to that. And you can see the camera side is only rendering the blue layer. Let's say that, for instance, we wanted to change this quad to be blue. So let's change that one to color blue. Maybe about that, perfect. And let's also change the layer and it's gonna do a blue layer. So now camera size, camera side is rendering anything that is in blue. So I have my sphere, which is blue, and it has the blue layer associated with it. You can see that. And I also have my quad associated to the blue layer. So camera side can only render that layer. I can disable my camera side and now I see everything the camera front is viewing. The reason for that is because the cooling mask is set to everything. You're more than welcome to play with, you know, different layers. It depends on your game and your game requirements on what you want to have cameras to render. So that's really everything that I wanted to show you as far as like cameras. I'm going to cover some additional and more complex scenarios in the next videos, in the future videos. But for now, just keep in mind that you can have multiple cameras in your game and you can have a single camera if you like to. And you can also assign different layers. You can change the field of view, the projection, and some of the settings that I already covered. So that's everything that I'm going to go through in this video. If you guys have any questions, let me know through the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also share this video. Thank you, guys.